So I think I know most everyone, but if anyone does not know me, I'm Carolyn Smith, and I am now working with the um, Alumni Relations Office and the Alumni Association at Western. And we, a few months ago, did a survey. Hopefully some of you took that. I know a lot of you, I bothered about taking it. So thank you, I appreciate it. Um, and we sent it out to help us come up with a plan to improve the Bronco experience for all alumni. So part of that was reflecting on individuals who made a special impact on your experience at Western. And we had some open-ended questions about um, asking you who those individuals might be. And I'm sure that you all can guess whose name was mentioned more than almost anyone else. So um, Scott is the special guest of the day, although we will do a couple more of these too. So I'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, before we start bothering Scott with questions. We're going to start this whole thing by asking him some questions and just hearing about what's going on in the ambassador program, but I also wanted to ask him some fun questions. So he doesn't know the, what those are yet, but um, we'll ask him some silly questions about himself too. And then at the end, um, closer to the end, we'll, we'll let you guys talk to Scott and to each other because we want to make sure that you have a chance to interact too. Um, and it's so fun to see everyone's faces. So thank you guys for joining us. And I, I said to Sarah Bauer, most of you know, I think wanted to get on. And so she may jump in at the end, but I said, we might have to figure out a five o'clock one sometime later this year, just so that we can all get together. So, so Mr. Hennessy, one of your favorite Broncos. I call him my mentor, he hates that. Um, but he is now the Senior Associate Director of Admissions and Campus Outreach, and he still oversees the Student Ambassador Program. We wanna know before we get started, just because it does look a little different these days, but I know you were gonna share a little timeline on how the Ambassador Program started and what it looks like today. Sure, absolutely. Um, I kind of wanted to start because I uh, thought it'd be interesting and then we'll go backwards. Um, but I know a lot of people ask what we're doing right now. Um, so we um, were told uh, one Friday in March that by the end of the day, you need to be out of the building, out of campus, uh, like I'm sure many of you were too. And um, luckily we had started some discussions that this could be happening. Um, but we in the last three months um, have gone entirely virtual with everything. So um, we went in um, three days. We went online with our tours and our presentations and we contracted with a group, uh, a vendor. We were using them before we even paid for them, which those of you who work in higher ed or probably anywhere else, that's impossible and unheard of. Um, but we went in eight days. We had our first mass event with over 300 students. Um, we were the first one to use their new technology. So Natalie is actually in the room and she's done most of it. So I'm going to ask her to unmute herself. Um, and she share didn't a little know, bit. did she? <laughs> uh, I warned her. Um, so I, I want to make sure she gets credit because she's done most of it. But we really have um, completely changed how we've done things very quickly. Um, and we're getting great feedback um, from guests. Um, I went on one of my return on investment rants one day because in one day we had two people say they were committing because of the sessions we did, which paid for all of what we were doing, plus money, plus leftover. So Natalie, can you share a couple of the cool things that we're doing like Lunchtime Live and the tours? Sure. I think you did this on purpose so you wouldn't have to talk. I did. Just pass, I did. pass the mic on to somebody else, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have over a dozen different type of sessions being offered, including daily virtual Q&A sessions. Um, then uh, we have all the academic colleges at some time or another during the week offering sessions. Um, but then our ambassadors are heavily involved in terms of hosting Lunchtime Live, 
um, which is just a chance to talk to current students to learn about campus without any sort of agenda, um, like the Q&A or the academic colleges. Um, and then we also added in what we're calling um, Bronco Break Room, um, which is basically lunchtime live, but in the evening. Um, and again, the students aren't even necessarily talking about Western. It's just kind of a chance to kind of build a community at Western before they arrive in September, fingers crossed. Um, and those types of things. Um, today, I will be building virtual open house. Um, so we were originally supposed to have an open house at the end of the month. Um, we're doing that. Um, and then our students are actually able to um, share their screen to show our virtual tour that's accessible to everyone. And um, our ambassadors kind of then do a voiceover type of thing. So students are kind of getting a personal tour um, with from um, but with the virtual tour, so it's, it's, it's different, but at least they're interacting with students and they're able to ask their questions in real time. So it's busy, it's fun, kind of, um, mostly. I'm kind of glad she ended with that because most, many of you in the room were tour guides. And if you can you know, think about, you're using a virtual tour that was um, designed two years ago, is not the same route, does not have the same stops, um, but um, you're turning off the avatar and you're taking over. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of the group with how fast they moved and how well they're doing with that. It's very different. It's not a substitute completely, um, but we're getting great comments on it. So think about how you, you navigate that. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been very interesting, but we've flowed quickly and effectively and the virtual will stay. Uh, even when we get back on campus, we'll definitely stay doing that. So. That's a few of the newer things that we're doing. I'm, sh I'm sure some of you who are in higher ed are, are doing a lot of those too, but we, we move very quickly to make that work. So, um, are, the, are the ambassadors working from home? Yes, yes, they are. We have ambassadors working from Indianapolis and Florida and Colorado and, and Kalamazoo. So, um, nice. you know, I would say what, Natalie, maybe 15 or 20 of them are pretty engaged uh, on, a, on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, we also moved all of our, we, being done in mid-March, some of our new people weren't tour trained yet, so we moved that online. Um, that was a real challenge, <laughs> um, but um, we didn't want to stop. We needed to maintain whatever momentum we can. So um, maybe later we can, you know, I can give you an update on what we hope to do uh, when we get back to regular tours, but um, there are some folks uh, here. Thank you for joining that um, you know weren't ambassadors. So we um, moved back a little bit, um, as Carolyn said to the beginning. Um, so I joined um, the the way I got in this position. For those of you who don't know, is kind of an interesting story. Um, I I briefly went to law school. It sucked. All right, I did not like it. I was not there for the right reasons. Um, so I came back to Western and decided to look into the um, communication masters. Uh, I went in and talked to the um, head of the department and I said, what, what do I do for money? I can't really pay for this, what do I do? And she said, well, there's a graduate assistantship in the Office of Admissions. The application is due tomorrow. Um, so here it is, and I, I didn't know what a graduate assistant was, I didn't work in admissions. Um, so I filled it out and got the job, and 20, what, six years later, I'm here. I often think about, and many of you have heard me say this, things happen for a reason. And had I gone into that department two days later, I would not be sitting here. Um, so I always throw that story out to start with. When I started, we were volunteer-based. Uh, completely. Um, I had to beg for a computer and a helper. Um, and, you know, if you think now, uh, we, we got to one point of 117 ambassadors with lots of leadership positions. But back then it was volunteers. Um, I gave probably as many tours as everybody in here except Tony, maybe. Um, <laughs> because um, I had to and I enjoyed it. Um, we branched off around the time of Sarah Hussein and Shums and a few um, to having uh, both 
volunteer and paid staff, especially leadership. Um, we are now completely paid and have been for a while, which is a lot of blessing. I mean, I do miss the volunteers. They had some great stuff that they brought, but there's much blessing to that. Um, our next big change clearly came with telecounseling. Um, we went from a system where volunteers came in and had about 10 minutes of training, called, had some pizza, maybe stayed, maybe left. Um, found out one night that one of them didn't even go to Western. He was a Kalamazoo Valley student who just wanted some pizza. Uh, <laughs> to a system that most of you hated, but the EMIS system. Um, and our first telecounseling coordinators, Kelly Panazzo and LaDonna Upshaw. And then I see several of you in here who were involved, including Kirsten. Um, at first I did it by myself, but I've been very blessed to work with a lot of great bosses who are here today and I thank you for coming. Um, definitely couldn't have done this without you. Uh, anything from the division of duties to the conversations that each of us took depending on who we had to address, you know, um, what the policy violation was. Uh, bosses, you all know what, how we divided some of that up. Um, so um, group tours are still here, but not this year. We are not doing any special tours this year, as you can well imagine. Um, what probably is kind of interesting to you all, uh, the first Bronco Buds group of Kalamazoo Promise sixth graders uh, is now graduating from college. So that's, that's how long that's been. Um, the first group um, is, they're either a college senior or just graduated. Um, I'm, I'm a little off on which year, but um, what else did I mention? Any, what am I forgetting, guys? You, well, many of you were there. Um, oh, here's something that you may or may not know. Um, the first social media at Western Michigan, the first Western Michigan Facebook page was actually created by a bunch of ambassadors on their own time. Uh, I don't know how many of you know that, but we took it out, the university took it over, um, and what is their 150,000 fans now? So, a little history. Carolyn, what I miss? Well, I was just thinking that I, and you got the email too with a pony journal yesterday. I was scared to open the link before this. <laughs> yeah, I actually emailed back and said, who sent this? I don't like the open links. <laughs> did you, who, who said, did you send it, Carolyn? No, I didn't send it. Did anyone on here send it? <laughs> I I figured I'd open the link after this, so my computer didn't die before today. <laughs> I have a feeling it's Chad DeWolf, for those who remember that name, way, way back in the day, but I didn't want to open a link that I didn't know what it was. Yeah, so. <laughs> but it was a pony journal, for those of you who yeah. remember pony journals. <laughs> yes. We'll, the, we'll look at it eventually. The very first telecounselors named themselves the Phone Ponies. Um, others thought that was a very odd name, but they did it, so. Very good. A little history. Yeah, and I, so that brings up memories for everyone, I'm sure, and that was part of the reason that we did this. And I was going to say too, and I should have mentioned this earlier to everyone, some of you are using the chat. Feel free to put any questions in there or comments or memories or whatever, and we'll go through it later too after we give Scott a chance for me to bother him with questions some more. But um, I was going to ask you, um, so I think a lot of people have different memories than I do. Some of these guys were here before I was doing student ambassador stuff. So like I heard on one of Reed's events that you love the Beatles, which I did not know. Um, but other people remember your kids and they remember your gnomes and they remember Sharknado. So I was gonna ask you, first of all, how what Maggie and Matthew are up to because they're a little bigger than, than we remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's one of the questions when I ambassadors ask and I tell them they usually, their jaws drop. Um, so Matthew will be a junior at Michigan Tech University. He is studying forestry. His goal is to um, either fight forest fires 
or work in a national park. Um, he was awarded in high school, uh, senior year of high school, the person most likely to live in the wilderness and be mad at the government. <laughs> and so that pretty much sums up my child. He is a hardcore libertarian and often clashes with his very liberal parents. Um, <laughs> but it's fun. He knows what he's talking about and I respect that. Um, <laughs> So um, he is, um, he was supposed to be on an internship this summer, but that kind of fell apart. He was supposed to be in yeah. Arizona studying tree rings. Yeah, that's what's fun for him is studying the growth of a tree. Um, Maggie is just graduated from high school. She will be attending Western in the fall, um, studying uh, secondary ed, hoping to be a history slash Spanish teacher. Um, so they are both graduated. They, Maggie was supposed to be at Girl Scout camp this summer and that got canceled. So we actually stole an extra summer with our children. Um, but that's probably it. We're about to be empty nesters, um, which is, um, very good and very strange at the same time. I mean, I'm ready, but it's also very weird. So Will Maggie live on campus. She's going to live at home, uh, fall. Makes sense. Because of the uncertainty, um, mm -hmm. but she will move out as quickly as possible um, <laughs> <laughs> for all of our sakes. <laughs> so you survived the lockdown, though. <laughs> um, we're surviving very well. They've been wonderful. Um, we've played a lot of games, had a lot of campfires. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we're doing well. Good. Well, I, so now we have to talk memories of the SAP program. Yes, please. So I need to know if you have any funny or bizarre or memorable stories. I mean, I know mine, right? But do you have any that maybe some of us wouldn't remember? Or maybe some that involve the people who are on this call? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know, when I think of memories, I think of kind of two sets, right? One is work related to an extent, all right? Um, but some of the things that I hear from you all when you dial back in, which we won't spend a lot of time on because they're not as much fun, but I, I probably once a month or so get an email from someone who says, now I know what you guys were trying to teach us. Now that I'm a manager, I get this. Or um, maybe even, sorry I was such a brat. Um, <laughs> And that's really, really powerful. The other thing that um, people have said, I know Christine Slufa was one of them, but it's been multiple times, that we knew as bosses what they could do before they did. Um, and that's been very powerful. Um, one of my f favorite stories, and I won't call the person out unless they want to confess, um, <laughs> I, I, I realized one day that I felt really good about what we were doing because um, one of the ambassadors and I had a little little argument over direction and that person went home and um, vented to her mother who then said what are you doing I taught you better um, <laughs> your boss is right be quiet <laughs> so I was like wow a mom agreed with me <laughs> that's that's good I guess we're heading in the right direction <laughs> um, the other stuff, the other end is just the fun stuff. And honestly, most of it has nothing to do with work. Um, it's just how we all got along and the fun things that came up. Um, you know, I, how many of you have had lunch with Vicki Van Patten and watched her eat soup? <laughs> Vicki, would you like to tell them how you eat soup? <laughs> yeah, I actually had it yesterday. Um, <laughs> I pick out all the carrots and celery and then uh, eat it. So I don't eat any of the vegetables. Um, I will say Chelsea Cook made that uh, segment in the Bronco Blabber reminding us to wash our hands with soup. <laughs> I remember that. Um, you know, surprisingly or not, some of them also continue to evolve around food. Um, Tony brought me treats back every time he went to the UP and brought me food back um, from his yes, visits. So. Um, you know, one of Kirsten's main jobs was to regulate how long people took to go over and get food at night in telecounseling. Um, 
<laughs> we actually had to, you know, identify how long you get to do that. Some of you have joined us on, you know, post ambassador on the hot dog walks. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and a lot too is the boss stuff, you know, the relationships we had, some of it, you know, we would say in groups and some we wouldn't, but you know, how we built the team and how we got to know each other outside of the office and inside. Um, uh, I see, there's another person I see, Amanda. Um, Amanda, one of her jobs was kind of my assistant, Amanda Lozier. And one day we realized that she could know what I needed before I said it. Um, Natalie's very much like that now. Kirsten was very much like that. Um, you know, we got to a point where we didn't even have to talk necessarily. Um, then, you know, there was also the look from Jill or right. others. And that look could communicate. The nonverbals were just as important as the verbals a lot of times. Right, Jill? <laughs> or people who saw Jill? I'm still um, scared of Jill. <laughs> you know, Carol and I often talk about the Friday afternoon sessions in her office with Ashley Curry and others where we learned about young people culture that we were not familiar with um, and new terms that we'd never heard before. Some of which I use now and my children are like, how do you even know that? And I'm like, <laughs> Ashley Curry <laughs> or, that, or that group. So, um, I, you know, I look at your faces and I feel like I shouldn't be telling all the stories. Um, can, and we ask them to step in, Carolyn, or not yet? I think we can ask them to step in, but I want to play a game with you first. Oh, okay. All right. Can we play my game just to entertain me? We absolutely can. Okay. So I don't know if any of you guys know if you've watched Ellen's Burning Questions before. I love Ellen. And I love when she does Burning Questions. And I won't be inappropriate because we're recording this but I didn't tell Scott what questions I was going to ask. So there are some that are normal and some that are just very Scott. So the first one is normal. So the, the whole idea of Ellen's burning question, Scott, is that you have to answer the first thing that comes into your mind and you have to answer honestly. And then on Ellen, you're supposed to press a buzzer for no apparent reason, she says, but we will ignore that part because I did okay. not tell you to bring a buzzer, so you'll just answer. So the first one is an easy one for you. What is your favorite brewery? Oh, that is an easy one. Um, I'm going to be that dude that expands on stuff, though. You just have to deal with it. So my favorite brewery um, actually closed. It was Boatyard in Kalamazoo, but my current favorite is Tibbs. Brewing Company, which is next to the State Theater down in Kalamazoo. They have the best beer on earth. It's called Ben Jonesen. It's a chocolate toffee that they originally called Heath Bar Porter, but were called by the Heath Bar Company and told to stop. So <laughs> if you like chocolate beer, it is fantastic. My extension of that in confession is that I have an Excel document that lists all the breweries I have been to. Uh, that is my wife and I's hobby, and what we really, really miss about quarantine is not doing this. Uh, we have visited 183 Michigan breweries, um, 200 overall, and I could easily go through all of them. I won't, but if you'd like to see my Excel document with the ranked list of the 183 Michigan breweries we've been to, please send me an email later. I would be happy to provide that. We'll do that one later. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is, I don't know the answer to this, but what's something that everyone else loves that you hate? You all should know this, really. Oh, gosh, there's so many. <laughs> um, I will go with one that's a little broader because I could say fireworks or gum, but my big one is condiments. I do okay. not eat condiments at all. Um, <laughs> no ketchup, no mustard, they are disgusting. And it, I can't even be in the same room with some of them. So. Is there is there anything that you love that everyone else hates? Oh, that everyone else hates. No, I mean, every, I have good taste in everything, right? Um, I mean, I would probably say hot dogs with Twinkies and Easy Cheese. Okay, maybe, but you're missing out. 
Um, <laughs> I don't think people understand Sharknado. Well, um, that brings up another question I had for you. Oh, okay. So the student ambassadors at one point one year decided that we were going to try to raise enough money to name a shark in Sharknado. And so I just was curious if you knew what you would name a shark in Sharknado. Oh, um, wow. And I'm supposed to say the first thing that comes to my mind, huh? I would assume I would name it something to do with Western, like Buster or something like that. Um, but we'll go with Buster. We did not okay. raise enough money, by the way. Um, no, we did not raise enough. Not and I, I would not be surprised if that jar of money is still sitting somewhere in an office, because I don't think we it, used the it money. It probably is. <laughs> Interesting fact, we have not had any candy for sale in over 10 years, and it's still called the Sugar Shack. So, it, but yes, that jar is probably still sitting there. That makes sense. I love it. Um, a more personal question, do you have a favorite gnome? Oh, I and do. how many do you have in your collection currently? I have suffered two gnome deaths in the past year, um, so I am down to 49. Um, I would say, of course, the uh, Western ones, of course, bring special joy, but I also have one that um, Godzilla is eating some of some gnomes, and I also have a Bigfoot gnome, so I would say those, those would be up at the top. <laughs> I have so many fun questions I could ask. I love it. Let me ask you a real one. What what have you guys been doing during this whole lockdown thing? What have you been watching and reading? You've oh. been walking, I know. Yeah, um, for those of you who don't know, um, I, a couple years ago, was told by my doctor that I was headed in a very bad spot if I didn't cut carbs and sugar and get more exercise. So, and... Um, yeah, <laughs> I know, Hardy. <laughs> so this was in late 2018. So in 2019, I set a goal to purposely walk. And by that, I mean not to the copy machine or, you know, like that uh, 2019 miles, which is five and a half miles a day. And I did that and I've actually done more this year. Um, so I do a ton of walking um, with my dog and my Pokemon Go. I am addicted absolutely unbelievably obsessed with Pokemon Go and um, you know it gets me out and motivated I went for a walk at 10 30 last night because I needed to hatch an egg um, if you don't know what that means look it up um, so I've done a lot of walking um, we've went camping once and we're headed again next week um, and a lot of board games um, the only place I can sit still is by the fire, so we do a lot of fires in our backyard. Um, I, I'll give one show rec, two show recommendations if you're looking for a show. Uh, one of them is on HBO. It's called The Outsider. It's based on a Stephen King. Um, and the second one I started two nights ago, and I'm almost done, is Hannah on um, Amazon. I hate binge watching TV. It is one of my least favorite things in the world and I cannot stop watching Anna. Um, so I'll mention those two. We'll make Ashley McCann tell us hers later. <laughs> she binges. Okay, well I want to give other people a chance but I'm going to ask you one last question All right. because I want to. Who's your favorite sap boss? You don't really have to answer. We know it's Jill. That's fine. Well, I will say that <laughs> You all hold a special place in my heart for all different reasons, but I am most scared of Jill. So I will say Jill. I agree with that. Because I am most scared of her. Agreed. <laughs> Me too. Well, I, in order to let Scott, well, we'll make him keep talking, but I wanted to give you all a chance um, to talk as well and share your memories and ask Scott anything you might want to or talk to each other. So we're going to open it up at this point. Um, and I know some of you have put some memories in there, but I thought I'd ask if anyone has any favorite memories of Scott first, and we'll see where we go from there. 
and you can unmute yourselves. <laughs> I mean, I'll make him keep talking if you want me to. Before anyone think about before anyone think about it, I came to Western in 1996 to work in the admissions office. And something that I always remember about Scott is how embar embarrassed he got every time you talk about diapers, babies, because we had a lot of young people around also. They were having babies, getting married, and you know, that type of conversation. And he, he, People knew, so they did it on purpose, and he got all red and walked away or got embarrassed. Now, he got over that already after he had the babies. I yeah. still remember when he came to my office and told me that he was going to have a baby. I couldn't believe it because baby was a word that made him... <laughs> <laughs> and frankly, it does again, Hardy. I don't want anything to do with babies other than my own, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a warmer. So, warming up for other stories. There you go. I could try to prompt one here. Something else I was thinking about in terms of memories and stories are things that happened that taught us to do things differently. For example, the last time we gave a tour on homecoming was when the person dressed as Dumbledore joined the group and walked along with the tour group until he could no longer walk and fell down and the group had to step over him. So we do not do tours on homecoming. Um, if those of you who, back when we started Bronco Buds, um, we gave too much time for lunch. And so the students ate too much and bad things happened. So we cut lunch times down. <laughs> Anybody have any like, I learned this because of some weird situation. Well, someone, some people here will remember that we used to do the social justice book bowl and we stopped yeah. doing that for good reason. <laughs> yes, we had to be very firm and say that our student ambassadors would never judge a book bowl before. If you have not experienced a book ball, think of the worst people in Little League, the worst parents, or those, you know, the pageant parents. Um, it was nasty. These people, these parents got nasty with our ambassadors. So we pulled out of doing that ever again. What else? Chum said the vir Blizzard virtual tour with tornado training pictures. Oh, I think I tried to use that one. For training. <laughs> yes, I do remember that one. Um, I remember always needing to take attendance for people. Um, we had a chaperone from Bronco Buds who got left behind. Um, and I wasn't there, but Jacob Harmon got left in the woods at retreat. Oh, yes. I still blame you for that, though. <laughs> That was when I banned scavenger hunts because Vicky was supposed to run it and she got sick. So then I had to run it and I didn't know there were packages and things to hand out and people in charge. And I didn't, we had a whole awards ceremony for who the group that won the scavenger hunt. And we didn't tell Jacob Harmon that the scavenger hunt was over. So he was still standing in the woods waiting for people to come to him so that that was the end of scavenger hunts until ashley mccann came around and i let her take them over i didn't want it <laughs> i didn't want to do it you made me <laughs> also that time that bus ran into the bernhardt center that's just in my head for some reason do you remember and you hit the side and that was a whole big thing and mm -hmm. Then I used to talk about the cruise ship <laughs> running into the Bernard Center to destroy it. <laughs> Which we're building one now, so it's all great. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need that cruise ship after all. I'm reading if there are other memories. I a lot of the ones I think about about special tours aren't necessarily appropriate. Agreed. <laughs> so. Agreed. <laughs> Ashley's laughing. 
Um, okay, well, I feel I, like Kirsten yeah. should have lots of telecounseling ones, but maybe she's trying to find an appropriate one. I, I am thinking about it. <laughs> this is unrelated to the ambassador office, but I always, always, I uh, take my birthday off. Because oh, of excellent. Mm -hmm. And then I actually, I spent 10 years in higher ed, but now I'm in a small nonprofit and I actually worked the HR at Arizona State to let us have our birthdays off. So they still do that now. Nice. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. So that's all you. And I think it's very important. Always take your birthday off. I, that is a absolute must. You must do. I do have to tell you. <laughs> and Valentine's Day. As, as Jill brought up, I used to take the day, two days before, the day of Valentine's Day and the two days after off because people were mad the two days before because they knew their significant other was going to mess up and the two days after they were mad because they did mess up and I couldn't deal with the emotion. Um, that has dramatically improved. I don't know why, um, but people don't seem to be as sensitive to that anymore. Um, so that, that is a, a step forward, definitely. We should ask. I just got to, used to it. Should we ask Natalie if you still get big event sickness day? Day after eventitis. <laughs> <laughs> that is statistically untrue. I have actually looked, but everyone thinks that the day after a major event, I'm sick. Um, if I am, it's probably well deserved, but it's actually statistically not true, but that's okay. No, Carolyn, I have a lot of times I've now just automatically take the day off because I know that, you know, if I get sick, then you're all going to bring this up for the rest of my life. So, is there a spreadsheet with Fair. this data to prove it? Uh, yes, I have a spreadsheet <laughs> for everything. Whenever I see Dan with the football, I think that something emotional is happening. That's true. I wondered if you would bring a football today. I thought about it. I thought about <laughs> it. You know, one of the really weird things this year, and it went much better than I thought it would, but we also had to move Banquet online. Yeah. Um, and that was very sad. It, it worked out much better than I thought in my wildest dreams it would, but that, that was a big loss. And now we're talking about how do we have to do a retreat online? Um, or how do we break retreat out? Because we're not going to be able to have 70, 80 people in one room. And we're certainly not going to be able to do any of the traditional kind of things you do that involve you getting like near each other uh, so but I'm incredibly proud of this group um, they they stepped up and they generally have been very um, not dramatic about it um, now I, I will say one thing Mike and please don't repeat this to any of them uh, but I have told this to some of you especially Ashley the current group of ambassadors, I mean, this is a couple of years now, they are just not as funny as you all were. Um, they're just not. Um, you have to, they, they don't know how to be as funny. It's, it's really quite remarkable. Um, so <laughs> they do still do what you all do, which is exhausting. And anytime that I'm not being weird, they're like, what's wrong? Is Scott sick? Scott, are you sick? Why aren't you acting like an idiot today? I'm like, guys, can I just like not do the manatee dance for one day? Is Can I just be normal for one day? Apparently that is not allowed still. Um, it's a sign of the times. They all want to be boss. <laughs> yeah, they do, but there's a couple in this group that will love being boss for sure too. Uh, <laughs> the real question is, Scott, can you be normal for a day? Actually, I'm not sure if I can. Um, he was voted the weirdest boss. Now you understand why we're concerned. A few times I've tried, it actually has really backfired. Um, <laughs> both in my family and at home. I remember one vacation that we were in a, we rented a van and drove around the West for 14 days and slept in the van. And and they were like, why are you so weird? So I. I said, okay, I'm going to be normal today. And by like 9 a.m., they were like, will you stop? This is weird. Please, please stop being normal. Um, so I don't know, because I don't really have given the chance. <laughs> we took a vote. He's the weirdest in the office. I'm, I'm the most normal, so. That's concerning in and of itself. Very, very concerning. <laughs> <laughs> Who voted? <laughs> the ambassadors. Right, Jill, thank you. Natalie, I, mean, I know I'm not normal, but come on. I'm more normal than you. He's right. 
No, this was largely based on a 51-year-old man playing Pokemon Go, and I don't think that's a fair analysis. Um, that's true. Very true. <laughs> well, I... Who was talking? I heard someone. Anyone else have memories? I have one more question before I start this whole wrap-up thing. Can anyone still remember um, Sap Pride? Natalie, you don't count. Natalie, you don't count. <laughs> you guys help me out here. Service, attitude, performance. What's the other P? Professionalism has to be in there, please. Yes, professionalism. Um, oh, what's I just part? will point out relationship. That that is... Yep, relationship. Oh, yeah. Yep. I. Improvement. Integrity? No, nope, Tony got it. Improvement. Oh. Uh, dedication. No. Your tea. Enthusiasm. Yep. Thank you for your tea. Thank you for your <laughs> Nicole Reed was supposed to be on here. <laughs> oh, wait. Education. Okay. Yay. We remember. For the record, Ashley Perry has learned something from us as she remembered professionalism and she was my example of how to not wear holes in your jeans. So <laughs> I'm glad you remembered that one. I also have the best record on final exams, just saying. That is true. She failed her final. We had to have a talk about attitude that day. So. And no love on your butts. Let's just <laughs> clarify why <laughs> why I failed it because I answered questions. I forgot to go back and change my answers. And I answered things like, what do you wear on open house days to like sweatpants? Probably with writing on your butts. And I forgot to go back and say that you wear dress pants, such as life. I was tired. You guys were stressing me out at that point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I feel like we all could just keep going all day, but I will not force that upon you. Although I do feel like we should try to plan something bigger and more informal at some point later this year, virtually. Okay. So, um, but I, I also want to make sure you guys know in case you're interested, because we're going to do a few more of these, they probably will not be as silly because it's not going to be Scott and all of you, but we do have some faculty who are fun still. Um, Dr. Gambino from Food Marketing, he is a very funny guy. And then Joanne Atkin from Marketing. Um, and then a, Jay Burko, who's the director of the Music Theater Program. And some of you might have seen that he um, recently did a project called The Resilient Project. So he's gonna jump on with us at the end of July too. So you are all welcome to come back if you would like. You won't have as many memories, I know, but that is fine and we invite you to those as well. Um, and before I say goodbye to everyone, I wanna make sure Scott can say anything else that you would like to, to all of these people. So I, I guess my first question, is there anything that we all can be doing for student ambassadors or for uh -huh. admissions at this point? That's a great question. Um, you know, I know a lot of you have experiences that would be relevant um, or, you know, you just might have thoughts. We're going to open tours back up at some point and it's going to be very interesting. So at this point, we'll have one family per tour guide and we may not go in buildings. And so, you know, if you ever have any thoughts, anything you see like at a restaurant, you know, I went to two restaurants, last two breweries, to be honest, last weekend, and one made me feel much more comfortable than the other. You know, if you see anything people are doing um, that can help make families comfortable um, or anything virtual, um, we're really trying to build out um, fun. You know, Natalie talked about Lunchtime Live and, and stuff, and Western right now has really, in some ways, lost the 
the presentation of being a student and the outside the classroom and, and what it's just like to be a student at Western. And it's, it's really hard to duplicate that. Um, so if you ever have any suggestions, um, you know, please, please let me know we, we need anything. Um, I, the, I mean, to be frank and selfish at some point, we're going to need to reach back out to people um, because our budget has been decimated again. Um, and, you know, I worry about having a banquet and I worry about some of the fun things that we were able to do and whether I have the pledge, my boss believes in that. All right. Um, it's not that, but you know, when it comes back around you know that kind of thing. So um, as far as Western, um, we got to tell our story and you are the best people to do that. So when there's an alumni event that you can get to, or, you know, you just get, even answering a survey is so important. Um, but I would say, you know, stay in touch. There is a group of ambassadors that um, reached out and asked, um, you know, what, if for anything specific, our ambassadors really need um, some, um, gosh, motivation is the wrong word, but they need to know that how important they are and what you all learned so if you ever want to, you know, jump in one of our training sessions for a couple minutes or send me a video or anything, because, you know, this, this job was always hard, but now think of that you're on the front lines walking around campus in 90 degree weather with a mask and struggling to open a door because you don't want to touch it. Um, I mean, when we get back in session, we're going to need to try to find ways to motivate them to feel good about what they're doing and see the outcomes. And you guys are the best examples of outcomes. So if you have any ideas, please reach out to me or Natalie or any of us. Um, I have some kind of more formal stuff I wanna do to you know, get a better sense of where you all are and what you're doing in that. Um, but we'll see how that develops, but please feel free to reach out at any moment. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom from our mentor? <laughs> no, uh, I just, I think the thing I hear from you all and see from you all, uh, I just, I, I, re I really value the kind words that you've given them back, but I also more importantly see that you pay those forward. Um, so Carolyn can joke about, you know, me being a mentor and it makes me uncomfortable, but I know she's trying to mentor others. So, you know, just, just pay what you learned forward and I'll be happy. Good deal. Thank you. Can I, oh, oh, I have one more thing. Yeah, go for it. I love being, I love this job. So don't mistake the next portion, but um, my goal is in three and a half years to go do something else. And that may, if, if everything worked out, I would be living in Flagstaff, Arizona in three and a half years. Um, having a, I, I would be working, but doing a different job. So I want you to all think about in January in three and a half years of having a massive party. Um, that may not happen. The stock market in my portfolio took a tank. But um, as much as I love this job, eventually I, I do want to do something different um, and, and maybe live somewhere different. So um, if you live somewhere cool, tell me all about it. Um, the goal is the mountains. Um, but, um, you know, share, share interesting things you're doing. Tell me the great breweries you've been to um, and get ready for a party um, in the future. We start getting our thousand page PowerPoint ready for your retirement banquet. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Well, they asked me to do a screenshot real quick. So if you all want to smile and make yourselves look pretty, I'm going to do that. Jill, you're not allowed to get off for that. So don't do it. Of course, now I can't figure out how to do that. So hang on. <laughs> I did this before. Okay. Hang on, hang on.
It's coming. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. And thanks Thank you for, for coming everybody. on today. We appreciate it. And hopefully if you want to join some others, you can do that. But also I do feel like we should uh, try to do something more informal at some point this year too. So keep an eye out for that. Maybe we'll get a few of you to help help us plan something.